used to play football on a Saturday morning. Then in the afternoons we got to a little dance in a, in a village next to the village I lived in, a place called Queensbury, and they used to have a, a dance hall there called the Canberra, and, and they'd start off every dancing session with Elvis Presley's uh, King Creole. And from that point onwards, I was hooked on Elvis Presley. And, it, you know, it was, a, it was a wonderful time. And, of course, it was a, a wonderful era for music in general, none more so than the great, late, great Elvis Presley. I loved his style. I loved his way of dressing. I loved his charisma. I loved his, um, you know, his vocal range, which was magnificent, and the impact that he made on music. And it was, uh, you know, it, it's been a wonderful obsession for, for many, many years. Well, of course, Frank's other passion and obsession was football. He played over 200 times for Leicester City, but when he began his career as a 16-year-old with Huddersfield Town, he told the then manager Ian Greaves that he was destined for stardom. It wasn't bravado, that was just something that I'd said to myself, you know, I watched television and we'd seen all the great players and I wanted to be one of those players. Bobby Charlton was always, you know, one of my heroes, you know, at school level. Johnny Giles, another wonderful player, and every opportunity we could get to uh, visit Manchester United or go and see them play, or Burnley, in fact, when Burnley had a wonderful team, Jimmy McElroy, he was another hero of mine, and, uh, you know, great players, and I, I just wanted to be one of those. I never really stopped working on the skill side of uh, the game, and I'd always go back in the afternoons and go and try and hone and try and perfect, uh, you know, the ball control or the little twists and turns, this type of thing. I honestly don't think that players work enough on the basic things of playing football and that has been able to control pass the ball and um, perfecting skills. At the age of 23 Frank had an amazing opportunity Liverpool's Bill Shankly came calling, a £100,000 offer was made and the deal was done all except for the medical. Frank had high blood pressure. Liverpool pulled out of the deal and Leicester City's Jimmy Bloomfield stepped up to sign a player who will become a legend at Filbert Street. The biggest regret of my life, the fact that uh, I never actually joined Liverpool Football Club and played for the great Bill Shankly. After we'd had the medical, Shankly sent me away to Mallorca and told me to rest. And uh, being a young footloose, fancy-free football player who was enjoying the fruits of, of those sort of things uh, at the time, I didn't get much rest. And I came back to Anfield and, and the blood pressure was still up, so uh, it was a, a lot of money they were paying out for me and, um, you know, they knocked the deal on the head, much to my uh, regret. Kevin Keegan, who uh, Shankly bought me to play up front with, went on to have a, a wonderful career and quite rightly so, a tremendous example to any youngster coming up in the game, tremendous professional and part of a great Liverpool team. And had I been part of that great Liverpool team, I might have gone on to do the same things and have the same sort of success that Kevin had. I mean, it, it is a regret, but I've had a wonderful time playing with the clubs that I played for. But the one thing that could have made everything wonderful would, would have been that one move to Liverpool. Frank only played eight times for England, scoring two goals, and most of those games were under England manager Joe Mercer. Joe Mercer was uh, absolutely magnificent. He's a wonderful man, tremendous passion for football. And uh, I remember we played Yugoslavia in uh, Yugoslavia. I think we drew two apiece. And I remember just sitting with Joe at the dinner later on in the evening. And uh, just Joe and myself just talking about football. And Joe was the type of guy who could talk to you about football all day. And, and just listening to what he had to say it was an education. Don Reavy took over and Don Reavy got rid of me. He got rid of Hudson, Curry, Bowles. You know, he got rid of not all the skill, but a certain amount of skill there. Because well, I don't think he liked my or maybe our image. I felt that I'd done enough at that level to give myself credibility and, and to um, blossom into international football. If there's one goal that sums up Frank Worthington's career more than any other, it was a goal for Bolton during a Division 1 match against Ipswich in 1979. It has become a bit special to me, that game. I mean, it was a smashing goal and um, I think Ron Greenwood, who was in charge of the England team at that time, I think he was watching that day, but uh, it didn't seem to have any effect on him. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a very instinctive situation that happened on a Saturday afternoon, which we've practised and that over and over. I've controlled it on my head. Terry Butcher, Russell Osman, the Mickey Mills, pushing out on the edge of the box. And uh, instinctively, I felt that the, the space was in behind them, obviously, if they're all pushing out and tightening up on me. And it was just an instinctive reaction of flicking the ball over my head, which I've done many, many times in training, but it never happened or never the situation hadn't occurred on a Saturday afternoon and I just flicked the ball over my head, spun past Butcher and as the balls dropped down I struck a beautifully timed volley right in the far corner of uh, Ipswich's net.